in these fissures I find poetry about poetry and I know how to continue so the words don't leak but thrive in those spaces in between allowing the absence of mythos to teach us how to coexist with lack. Now, that's radical. In the world obsessed with the presence of logos, in the world where the act of looking at a tree is more often than not an act of seeing a lumber. What if you look at the tree with your spine horizontal? What if you let your hips take a lead? and walk with your navel gazing at the sun and with your heart on the ground and with your feet in your heart and your head in your fingers, your hips in your knees, your hands in your womb, your feet in your belly and your belly in your head. In these fissures you will find the power of the ineffable, the power of the sparrow or perhaps a swallow that you may hold, but only for a moment. And when you do, feel it flutter. It's a gift. It does not need to be appreciated, but at least should be given its due attention. All words read, not skimmed, like another article. All sounds heard, not swallowed like colorful infographics. Let it approach you, slowly. Let it come to you. Listen. It wants to be taken in. It wants to be taken seriously, with more pleasure, passion, poignancy. It's always ready to possess you. You may use it, but never master. You may want it but never control, inherently rebellious, revolutionary, seductive work of words, radical, tender, radically tender, radical, attender. We need you, and it needs us, so there can be dance that hasn't been danced before and words that haven't been spoken before. Writing encyclopedias can only take us this far. Pure repetition can only conceal the whole at knowledge's heart. Pretending to miss nothing, to gather, hold, contain, and half, like that bumptious word, everything. Trying to persuade everyone that in conclusion, as aforementioned and argued by, we have something important to write. My body curls up with laughter. And the soul? Oh, that little thing we only have at times? It sits silent. Though I can count on it to speak when I'm sure of nothing and curious about everything. Poetry is Sabbath time that turns ordinary into sacred. Enigma that makes everything clear. Passing from a dreamed of transparency to the irreducible opacity of words which you have to try to reverse, my dear taking away my right to opacity, perhaps calling the text difficult. But don't forget that the purpose of poetry is to remind us how difficult it is to be just one person, for our house is open and invisible guests come in and out at will. The purpose of poetics is to remind us that being a writer and being uncertain can coexist, that the opacities can coexist and converge, weaving fabrics. But to understand this truly, one must focus on the texture of the weed and not the nature of its components. The purpose of poetics is to remind us that it's okay to be agnostic, 
The least religious man is not the atheist, but the positivist who misses poems that are everywhere. Poetry is not a luxury. Inspiration not an exclusive privilege of poets. Poetry's resuscitative power is always there. Small moments that become lifelines. First aid kits always ready to be used. Survival strategy. Palliative for eternity. Potential refuge that does its job by simply existing. Offering a place you can fall into to re-exist, to resist, to regenerate, to reclaim the open promises of bodies filled with words. Poetry is winter that makes the silence possible. Poezji potrzebujemy chyba do tego, żeby znowu nie rozumieć świata. Thank mm -hmm. you.